Hi, Terrence Parr here again. I'd like to talk to you today about your Python environment on your Mac. And it's really easy to get it screwed up. So this video is really about how not to get a completely messed up Python environment. Okay, so the first thing we have to get straight is you don't ever want to upgrade this operating system. If it says 10.15, you leave it at that for the entire program. It's very often the case that if you move to 10.16 when they come out this fall, it's going to make a bunch of libraries stop working. So you're warned now. Don't do that. Now, the dot five, dot six, dot whatever, those, yes, uh, those are the point releases that will provide bugs, uh, fixes, and so on for you. So that's a good idea. Okay. So Python is a programming language, and computers don't natively understand any particular programming language. And so we need a program, an interpreter, that will interpret the Python statements for us. Now, uh, it's just like any other application, and that means there can be multiple versions of that application on the disk. So we have to be very careful, otherwise we're gonna get in trouble. We don't want to use Python 2, we wanna use version 3 Python. The problem is the Mac comes installed with, uh, I think just Python 2 these days, but we don't wanna do that one. So let me show you what I've got from the disk here. If I do which Python 2, it's gonna be some weird location uh, we don't want that. So if I say Python 2, it even says not recommended. Why well, it's still here? Okay, I don't know. What we want is Python 3. And what you're going to notice is that Python 3 is in this package called Anaconda, which we'll get into more in just a second. So when you run Python, you want it to say, first of all, Python 3. Point blah, blah, blah. But you also want it to say Anaconda. Because Anaconda is going to be an environment that has everything for us. It's going to have all of the libraries, it'll have the right version of Python, and they're all going to be working together. Anaconda, if you look on the web, is this very big download. And once it downloads, you're going to want to install it, and you'll see that it is installing it here in the opt directory of your, of your root. Uh, where you, your directory is, your user directory. And then in the op subdirectory, and then underneath that is Anaconda 3. And of course, if we navigate to the bin for binaries, we'll see that there's a Python executable in here. There you go, Python 3, Python, and so on. Easier way to do that is just say which Python, which we already did. And you can see that the slashes indicate subdirectories and it takes us straight down. And so this is the Python that we're executing. Okay, so that is something you want to make very clear that you're using the right version of Python, uh, like version three, not version two, and you're using the right program, the right interpreter. We want everything to be coming out of Anaconda. It's just much simpler if we all use the same environment. Python is um, just another programming language like I'm using from the shell here. This is another programming language. I'm gonna enter a new environment when I say Python. And of course I can do this, but I can also write actual little programs and so on. And then when I exit, Oops, I go back to the shell and that's where I type commands. Now, there's a fancier version called IPython and here I can do the similar sort of thing, except now you can see it's kind of fancier. That is something I don't usually bother with, but it becomes part of something called a notebook, which we'll take a look at shortly. Okay, we'll get out of that. We're going to be installing all sorts of things. There's two kinds of things that we install. One is a series of applications, which you do normally. Uh, you know, you've installed browsers, you've installed all sorts of things. The other thing we want to be able to install are a bunch of command line tools. So for example, well, first we need this, this thing called brew. Homebrew is what it's called. But once you install it with this stuff here, okay, so when I want to install Graphviz, which is a great library for doing all sorts of graphical networks and so on, uh, I say install, of course I've already got it installed, uh, so it'll warn me about an update. Okay, yeah, so I've already got it installed. Brew is how we install all of the software that we're typically going to be using. Now, if it's Python software, then we're going to be using pip. So pip is a Python install program and it is what goes to find Python libraries and installs them inside the Anaconda library area. So again, 
We're going to wrap all this up in our Anaconda area. Okay, so let's install a library called LawViz that I did that helps me display data structures. So install LawViz. Okay, that's installed. Now, if I want, I can write some Python directly here by entering into the interpreter. And I'll just cut and paste this stuff. First thing I do, of course, is to import my libraries. And then I'll define some little pieces of data. And uh, then I can use the object view to pop up a little window. So you can see that I've got this visual representation of this two-dimensional list here, a list of lists. Okay. So, by the way, I'm hitting Control D, hold down the Control key and hit the D to get out of there. Now that I've got a library installed, I can use it to do interesting things. Okay, so there's another way to execute that code. Instead of just doing everything interactively from the command line, we want to store it in a file so that we can edit it. I'll go up into slash temp and I'm going to create test.py and inside I'm going to paste the example we had. Okay, and I save and I quit the file. And then from there, I can say cat, which concatenates it to the screen, what's inside. And then I can execute it and up pops the same window that we had before. Okay, the difference is now we have it in a file so I can edit it, you know, like it's a real program. So most libraries, in fact, the LawViz library that we just imported is in fact a Python file. Much of what you do for my class, you will be submitting files with Python in them. In many other classes, and when you're doing development work for machine learning models, you will often use something called a Jupyter Notebook. And let's take a look at that thing now. Uh, I can just do it from this current directory. I'm going to say Jupyter Lab. Jupyter is the name of this notebook mechanism, and the lab is the latest version uh, that we want to be using. And you'll see that it starts up this little server, and then there's a browser that starts up with this little URL that's to a local machine. And I say create some temporary little file, and um, I can do all sorts of interesting things like I normally would a three plus four. And so I get all of this code. I can even run what I had from before. I can run all this stuff, except I don't need view now. I get rid of the view and it'll do it in line. It's a great way where I can go back, oh, you know, I didn't mean four, I meant five. And then I can uh, rerun it and I can go in and change this to be something else. And you can see that it changes it. So this notebook is an interactive means of developing software. And it's very, attractive for lots of things you do, but not necessarily for the classes that you work with me on. So just keep that in mind. Uh, one of the reasons that I started from here, instead of, for example, from the Anaconda Navigator, which you also have available, you can run this Jupyter Lab this way. I don't run it that way because here I can go kill this thing with Control C, shut that down, and I can make this go away. That's and I can go to my data directory. Got a bunch of files in here. And I can start up Jupyter again. And now I'm in a different directory. And so I have access to whatever's inside there. So for example, I can say, if I use an exclamation, uh, com, uh, an exclamation mark first, it executes something as if I were from the command line. And so it shows you the same files that I see when I do ls from here. Okay, now I can use pandas to read in, say, uh, rent test.csv. And now notice it read in this data frame and I can go back and change it. You know what, I only want the first three. Cool. And so this gives a nice visual representation of this data frame that I read in. So notebooks are really a great way to kind of explore data and to do some visualizations. But if you're going to be building libraries, such as you will for my class, it's very often not the right approach, but you can at least explore that, uh, your program that way. Okay, so there's another option for you for development, and that is PyCharm. So 
I'm just I'm just displaying some uh, program that I was playing around with earlier. What you notice here is that the code is uh, in my center window here, and I've got a pane down here where I can execute Python code. Uh, I have the documentation over here for any one of these, you know, or these libraries that I happen to be using, one from uh, PyTorch. So it's just a very useful, rich environment for which I can use to develop software. And so this is what I recommend, but it seems to take people a while to get used to it. Um, one of the things that messes them up, if you go to the preferences, there we go. <laughs> I don't ever use the mouse unless I have to. Uh, under Project Interpreter, what you notice is that I'm using this Python 3, and that's what you want to do. Um, you'll notice that there's another one available. Don't use that one. Use the one under Anaconda keep that set to Anaconda, then what you use on the command line will be the same that's going on inside Python, uh, PyCharm. So that is one of the ways that you can get discontinuities and things behave differently depending on which environment you're in. Uh, let's see, the next tool that we need to talk about is Git and GitHub. So if you go to the course website, you'll see that this is at GitHub. So you can see the URL here. So GitHub is a sort of a central server that holds Git repositories. A Git repository is a collection of files and subdirectories. So here is the repository for the data acquisitions class. And if you want, you can dig down into these things and you'll see that I've got all sorts of uh, project descriptions and so on. And when you deliver software to me, you're going to be delivering, say, these particular files and you're going to be doing it through GitHub. So you'll use Git on your local machine to package things up. You'll submit it to GitHub, and then I will use that to pull it down to grade your projects. And I'll go over a full thing on GitHub, but I just wanted to introduce it to you now. Part of that is a GUI you can use to manage your Git repositories on the local disk. So here is a series of changes that I've been making to a repository for some software. And it knows that I made some various changes here, and it can actually show me on the left and the right what has been changed. But I can go back to July 2019 and say, hey, what did I change? Or I can move to the latest version and look at what I did in the most recent change. Okay, so Fork is a very useful piece of software that I highly recommend you use as well. Just to recap, Python is the programming language we're going to be using. It's Python 3, not Python 2. Be aware that there could be multiple versions of Python on your machine, and you want to make sure that you've installed Anaconda Python and that all of the Python libraries you install and the Python program you use are all coming from Anaconda. We have Brew that we use for installing executable software. We have Pip where we install libraries for Python that we use in our applications. We have GitHub and Git, which we use for uh, managing our software and for submitting our software for most of your classes. Okay, so that's enough to get you started and then we'll start digging into more details later.